Would you believe me if I told you that all of you have herpes? Or at least some kind of herpes virus, because there are actually lots of different types. You might have had chicken pox, or you might get cold sores, both of which are caused by herpes viruses. You might even have one and not know about it. It might never cause you any problems whatsoever. And herpes viruses have this fairly unique property to be able to establish a lifelong infection in their host. So once you've got herpes, you've got herpes for life. And that's exactly what the virus I work on, ovine herpes virus 2, does. It infects sheep from a very young age, and it persists inside them for the rest of their life. But it never really seems to cause them any problems. They don't really ever have any clinical signs of disease. However, this virus is a little promiscuous, and it can infect a range of other species, including deer, bison, and cows. And when the virus gets into these unnatural or foreign hosts, it causes this disease called malignant catarrhal fever. And as you can see from the cow, he's quite snotty and his eyes are gunky and they're a bit opaque and he looks pretty sick. And on the inside, the cells that the virus usually infects, which are cells of the immune system that normally help to fight off infection and disease, have actually turned against the cow and they're destroying the cow's own tissue. And this often proves to be fatal. So the big question is, why does this happen? Why does the virus seemingly do one thing in sheep and another thing in cows? When the two are very closely related in terms of their genetics, they're a bit like us and chimps. We think that the virus infects the same cell type in both species, and so the difference is most likely due to the way the virus interacts with its hosts. And that's really what my PhD has set out to investigate. And we've identified these small molecules that the virus has, and sheep and cows and humans have them too, so they're nothing to, to, to be worried about. But they have the ability to interact with a range, of, a range of different things inside the cell. And they do this in a very specific manner. And so it's possible that maybe these small molecules do one thing in sheep and another thing in cows. And so I'm looking at these molecules and I'm characterizing them and trying to find out what they do in sheep and cows or whether they're different. And whether that difference could at least partly explain why the cows get sick, but the sheep are fine. Thank you.